Hello everyone, this is Sulky and in today's video we're going to be talking about someone that I've been super excited about and that is Kuki Shinobu, the new 4 star that was drip marketed to release in version 2.7 so we have a little bit of time to go but I'm super excited about Kuki because she is an electro character that we've heard mentions about. Uh, she's part of the Arataki gang and I feel like we were first introduced to her with Ito. I've had high hopes for Kuki and hopefully she does not disappoint. So in this video, we're going to be going over the first look at her kit. And just so you all know, this could 100% change throughout the beta. So this is literally the first look at this character. So we're going to go and dive into what her elemental skill is, her bursts, what her passives are, how she kind of works on a team with the knowledge that we have so far about her. So if you are excited, go ahead and hit that like button and let's get started. So Mihoyo tweeted out what she looks like the other day. She looks absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm super psyched, but her kit is now on Honey. Uh, she is a sword user and it does look like she is going to be our first ever electro healer, which I am super excited about because if you're into mono electro teams or just electro in general, like I am, this is great news for us. So looking at her stats at level 90, we can see she has a base attack of uh, 212, defense 751. Her HP is uh, going to increase based on her level. And of course we have the crit rate and the crit damage stats that are similar for everyone. Her NAs and CAs, all of the info is there. I really don't want to get into this too much. Go ahead and pause if you want to look at the numbers there, but this is really what I want to talk about. So we learned from Miko in her voice lines that Kuki uh, could have been a shrine maiden, but decided to go off and do her own thing instead. And I think that her skill and her burst kind of reflect that that she could have been a shrine maiden, that she comes from a family of shrine maidens, which I think is really cool. So let's talk about her sanctifying ring, her elemental skill first. So this is going to create a grass ring that's going to cost her part of her HP and deal electro damage to nearby opponents. This is going to stay on the field even when she comes off of it. So if you switch in someone else, this grass ring is going to follow them around. I'm gathering that this is what it's going to look like on your character. And it's going to continuously deal electro damage every 1.5 seconds and also restore HP for the active character. And this is going to be based on Kuki's own max HP. With that said, we do want to acknowledge the fact that this says it's going to follow the active character and heal them. So whoever has this ring on them is going to get healed, which means that she might not be a viable option for co-op as she's only going to heal the active character in your own party, which is just something to keep in mind. Now it's gonna consume her HP and this could bring it down her HP to 20%. It looks like it will not go lower than that based on this language here, but we'll kind of see if that changes at all. And here we could see that she's talking about exercising evil, bringing it back to those uh, shrine maiden roots. Now, when it comes to her elemental burst, she is going to blade into the ground and create a barrier. Now this is gonna cleanse the area of all that is foul and deal continuous electro damage to opponents within its AoE, also based on her max HP. So it does look like we will be building her with HP artifacts. Now, based on what her HP is, if it's less or equal to 50 when the skill is used, the barrier is going to last longer. So it does look like she will get a bonus if she's not doing well. <laughs> it looks like this was an original technique used in weeding and ritual prayers that she has not forgotten, though her life as a shrine maiden may have ended. So really interesting to see these two skills. It looks like she is going to want to be built with HP. It does look like she is going to want to be at a low HP. HP in order to really thrive and it looks like she can only heal one character at a time. Now before we get into like the ascension mats I do want to go over her passives because I did find them interesting. Uh, first they 
thank goodness we're getting another uh, Inazuma Expedition character as Sarah is the only one right now. So that's always good to see. Going back to that HP, it looks like when it's not higher than 50%, she's also going to have her healing bonus increased by 15. So I think that having her at least at 50% HP in the party is going to be the biggest benefit to you all. Now, this one I think is really interesting because I'm getting Miko flashbacks here with an elemental mastery passive on an electro character, which I just find very interesting. Uh, nothing in her kit suggests that you should be building EM, but when it comes to this passive, it looks like the sanctifying ring, which is her elemental skill, is going to be boosted based on her own elemental mastery. Healing amount is going to be increased by 75% of elemental mastery, and the damage dealt is going to increase by 25% of elemental mastery. So it does look like she has more to gain from elemental mastery. I don't know if it should be the main stat or sub stats right now, but it does look like she has more to gain than Miko, and I am finding it very interesting uh, that we are seeing elemental mastery come up with these electro characters what does it mean for the future is dendro gonna do something i don't know uh it could all be hopium at this point but it is very interesting that she is also uh utilizing elemental mastery here so if this is the case and she is a sword user i'm thinking iron sting as a four star weapon might be beneficial for her here i think that as we learn more about her kit throughout this beta we can kind of see uh what to prioritize whether it be hp or elemental mastery. Now, as for her constellations, her AOE is gonna increase at 50%. Then we have a boost to normal charged and plunging attacks uh, for characters that are inside her grass ring. And it looks like they will get an increase in AOE electro damage based on her own HP. Now it does look like here with her C6, which is a very interesting and I think beneficial con. Uh, so when her HP drops to 25% or below, and remember, if we uh, we look at her skill over here, her HP consumption can actually bring her to 20% HP, which actually might work really well with her C6. She is not going to fall as a result of the damage sustained at this time. Instead, she's going to gain 150 elemental mastery for herself for 15 seconds, which is huge because we could see how much she scales off of elemental mastery, especially when it comes to healing. This effect activates automatically if her HP reaches one and this effect could be triggered once every 60 seconds. So I think the great thing about her is that she can kind of bring her own HP down because she doesn't seem like a character that you necessarily want to have out on the field for too much time. And of course, the more time you're on the field, the more damage you can actually take bringing down your HP. So it is nice that she can consume her own HP in order to heal her party, especially with this coming from her elemental skill giving you a better opportunity to kind of bring down that HP compared to if it was like at her burst or something like that where you'd have to rely on ER to consistently burst. So it is nice that her kit seems seamlessly like working with other parts of her kit which sometimes is you know rare in a character but it's nice to see that can she can kind of hold her own here. Now when it comes to her talent ascension materials it does look like she is going to be using the arm from the Raiden Shogun boss, which we did not have a character that was using that yet. So that's interesting. She's also going to use the elegance talent materials. So those of you who are farming for Ayato, get back to it. And it does look like she's unfortunately using those specters, which just kill me now. But overall, really exciting, interesting character here. It does look like she'll be getting a hangout quest as well, so we'll get to know more about her, which is exciting. And when it comes to teams, I feel like it's really too early to figure out what's going on. But I think Mono Electro, just because she is the first healer, is probably uh, going to see some popularity. Kind of see how she does on a taser team based on her E. She does seem to put out consistent electro damage to nearby opponents every 1.5 seconds, which could make her pretty valuable for those kinds of teams as well. Obviously, this is all to say, sure, there's definitely better healers than Kuki out there right now. 
uh, who can, you know, heal the whole party at once, can also heal in co-op. Uh, so we'll kind of see what's going on with her there. But I am really loving how seamless her kit seems to fit together. I think that she's kind of unique and exciting. I'm happy that she's a sword user as well. So I'm curious to see uh, how Elemental Mastery and HP play into building her. And I'm sure we're going to learn so much more about her in the upcoming weeks. So we'll see if anything changes here. That's really it for right now. So all of you, if you're excited to pull for Kooky, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love uh, to hear your opinions on her so far. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next Genshin video.